Well, welcome. I am so excited to have you with me. You're, you're rock stars in my book. And let me introduce you to everyone. Uh, we've got Carol Price, who is joining us from Book People of Moscow. Hi, Carol. And Laura Delaney with Rediscovered Books in Boise. Hi, Laura. And also Melissa DeMott from The Well-Read Moose in Coeur d'Alene, which has to be one of the best names for a bookstore <laughs> ever. <laughs> So um, I really want to talk with you about how you're weathering this time, both personally and for your um, clientele. Carol, uh, up in Moscow, when did you make the decision to, because all of you are close to the public, when did you make that decision to close to the public? I, I realized I'd been sort of gauging how things were going um, starting on the 17th. And um, I decided on the 24th that I would close the next day, which happened to be the day I think that the governor's order came down. So I came into work that morning knowing that I was not going to open the door. And then I checked all my emails and saw that that order had come through. So, and what uh, was, and how did you make that decision? Well, I think it got to the point where earlier that week and the previous week, um, I was working by myself. Um, to keep um, a limited amount of exposure for my staff. And I was feeling okay about letting people in the store. I was making them wash their hands before they did anything else. And um, we weren't ever having more than just two or three people in the store at a time. But I started to feel a little bit un pretty uncomfortable about having contact with various sectors of, you know, just people wandering in from anywhere. Sure, well. sure. And how many staff do you have, Carol? Um, I have about eight altogether. Mm -hmm. And um, at that time, I was just down to me because I wasn't sure. Everything had slowed down so much. And I didn't yet know what the financial aid packages were going to mm -hmm. look like, what I might be able to do. For so you had to lay people off? Or? I lay people off so that they could immediately... Wow, that must be hard. In employment if they wanted to. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't lay off everyone, but I laid off some. Mm -hmm. With the understanding that it was temporary, um, but I really needed to immediately cut costs because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. And, and how scary was that? How, how worrisome was that for you? Um, it was, it didn't really hit me until I was in here on a Saturday when it's usually, Saturday is usually one of our busiest days. And that first Saturday, I think it was before we closed to the public completely, but there was nobody in the store. And I thought, oh, wow, <laughs> this is really going to be serious. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So that's what I started to realize. I needed to take some strong, quick action to make sure that the store was going to survive. And we'll talk about that a little, little bit uh, later. Laura, what, was, what, what went through your mind and how early did you close to the public? So uh, most of our family is actually in the New York and New Jersey area. So this has been part of our news cycle a lot um, because they're all in there. Um, and we started talking about it uh, the first week in March and kind of saying, what is the criteria we're going to use? Um, I talked a lot with uh, Jill at the Record Exchange. Um, we were comparing notes on when and how to do things. Um, ultimately, we made a decision on to uh, the to close to the public, uh, our last day was the 21st. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had made that decision on the Tuesday, and we wanted to give people an idea to know that we were going to close, to say this is this is where we're heading. And we made that decision because it felt like the thing to do to make people recognize that this is serious. And you know, if they're going to say it's not safe to be in restaurants then it's not safe to be at an author event with 50 people at our store. It's not good to be hanging out and, and browsing and have everyone having all the people touching all the things at the same time in the space without ability to clean it. So we took that action proactively. Um, our initial plan was to, uh, to shift to curbside and delivery. Um, it gave us a little bit of time to plan it before we pulled the trigger. Uh, but it really was that we just felt that it was the right thing to do in the dense environment that Boise is. And how many staff do you have, Laura, and, and what is their status? What, what happened with that? 
So we had uh, 30 staff members um, oh. at the end of February. And that's between Caldwell and Boise, right? Yeah, that's with mm -hmm. all three locations. Because mm -hmm. um, it's Caldwell, Boise, and then our youth the, store once in future. Right, right. Um, and uh, we are operating at significantly smaller than that right now. Um, and we have staff at just the Boise store. And we have people visiting the other two stores each day to pick up deliveries and to transfer inventory back and forth. Um, but yeah, we are at a significantly smaller staff. Than so we they've, were. they've had to file for unemployment? Yes, we have. Um, um, we actually put two people on. Uh, uh, we did two people with paid time off or paid sick leave for two weeks uh, to see if we could bring sales up enough to bring them back. And we have. So they're still they are back working this week. Um, but the rest we did set up to be able to file for unemployment. Um, we did it at the end of the pay period so that they could apply mm -hmm. with the highest average number of hours we possibly could give them. And what has that been like for you emotionally, Laura, with 30 <laughs> employees? And um, That week that I was telling people was gut-wrenching um, because we told them on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday that their last day was going to be Friday. We didn't wait for them to come in. We let them know ahead of time as much as we could. Um, and it was, it was terrible. These are people that we work with very closely, we work on projects together. We laugh and we do silly stuff together. Uh, from, you know, we had a scavenger hunt as our staff party not three weeks before. Um, so that part is always terrible because what you're telling them is that you can no longer keep the promise you made when you hired them. Yeah, that's a, and 30 people, that's a lot of people. Um, just uh, real briefly as well, you mentioned curbside originally, but you changed your mind on that. Can you ex explain why? Um, so it's um, a many different reasons for why. Um, first of all, we found out that curbside is actually rather difficult to navigate um, because you don't know who's coming in and it was basically turning into many, many phone calls. Oh, I'm on my way, oh, I'm out front. <laughs> Um, and it was a struggle to keep enough lines open and I didn't want to add a bunch of phone lines for something that I'm hoping is temporary. Um, so that logistical piece, it felt like we were still very exposed because mm -hmm. we would have four or five people standing outside the door and we wouldn't know who was picking up what. It didn't feel like we were staying following those social guidelines. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing, as I read the governor's order, my interpretation was that um, businesses providing direct-to-home services could continue to operate. And so direct-to-home, in my mind, means delivery. Okay, and so that's something that you are doing, or all of you are doing delivery, is that right? I'm, you... I'm doing curbside oh. and delivery. And, yeah. And we're doing mostly online ordering, very little delivery, and I oh, can talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk to you in just about, but Carol, you are still doing, uh, curbside and, and why is that? It, um, there are still lots of businesses in the downtown, well restaurants, they're doing um, curbside and so there are, that's a common thing happening in the downtown right now. We don't have so people we're in, in, here in Moscow. Yeah. yeah, we don't have um, lines of people outside to mm -hmm. pick up their books um, so we mm -hmm. don't have any problem with keeping it um, spaced out and um, with the distance we can manage to keep it. So okay. we have a table outside the front door. We put the book out on the table when they let us know that they're out front. And then, so there's no contact and we feel mm -hmm. good. About, we feel great. Good about that. Mm -hmm. Well, Melissa in, in uh, Coeur d'Alene with Well, Re Re well Read Moose, um, talk about your process, uh, your decision making process to close down when that happened and, and why. Yeah, so we, closed to the public on the 18th. It was kind of like what Carol was saying. All of a sudden we were getting people that just wanted to hang out. Um, we were hearing about problems at the library with people milling around. Um, they were trying to do some um, will call for books, but people weren't just picking up the book and leaving. They were hanging out and that was stressing out their staff. And then that Friday, the I think it was the, the Friday before we closed to the public, um, a whole bunch of restaurants downtown Coeur were packed and 
know, everyone's blaming it on the people from Spokane coming over. We don't know, <laughs> but it was kind of disturbing for a lot of folks. And then that next morning, the mayors of Post Falls, Coeur d'Alene and Rathstrom shut down all the restaurants because they were getting kind of overrun with people and it didn't make a lot of sense. And we just didn't feel comfortable having people in the store. We couldn't manage, like Laura said, the cleaning. We had a lot of people we'd never seen before. And we have so many customers that we know really well. And it was kind of like, I think because we were open and like the Starbucks wasn't open, people wanted to just hang out and use our Wi-Fi. So we did that and we were doing the delivery and curbside and trying to get in a rhythm with that. I was doing most of the delivery and I love driving around. So that wasn't that big of a deal. <laughs> and then the Wednesday um, that the governor stay at home came out, you know, as I read that, I didn't really see the avenue for, in, you know, us being an essential business to stay open. So we opted to go with doing online ordering only with direct to home shipping. And that's proven to be really challenging because the wholesale fulfiller is trying to meet the needs of everyone all over the country and it's not working great. And so the orders, so we are supplementing that with some delivery and we're not doing any curbside. I'm probably gonna open it up to more um, delivery as I figure out the logistics. My staff didn't all wanna be in the store at the same time, but nobody really wanted to work by themselves either. And then I have some mild asthma. I have some family that has some immune immunity risks and health issues. And I just really never want my staff to do anything that I'm not really sure I wanna do. And so that's kind of what we're doing for now. Um, like today, one of our booksellers went in and he worked on some stuff and we're gonna start staggering some staff, I think, as we see this kind of progressing more um, because the online sales, it's, you know, maybe, 15% of normal, maybe. Right. So and, it's and, really hmm. a drastic hit. I am still paying my staff. We have eight people sure. plus myself. I'm not paying myself. So I'm doing that out of savings right now, which I don't know if that's real smart, but they're great people. Uh, I have applied for the PPP loan the, mm -hmm. that would cover eight weeks. And so my hope is that that would cover May and June. So and how if that doesn't come through, I'm going to have to lay people off. Uh at least temporarily. What does PPP stand for? The payroll pay protection <laughs> program or something like that. It's a okay. government loan um, that you get through an SBA lender that is forgivable if the folks that you had on payroll on February 15th are on your payroll at June 30. So it's and allowing for folks like myself to get a little bit of help, but you can also, if you've already furloughed people, you can bring them back and then have the payroll covered. The, the trick there is what happens after June, you know, what right. happens after that eight week period, because we don't know if we're done in, you know, eight weeks. And, right? and so it, it covers it. Do you have to pay the government back then for that it's later? If you if you have the staff at June 30. So you have to turn in Got it. documents and stuff like Got that. Got it. Got it. And it wasn't super onerous to apply. And, and are, the, are the other two of you, apply, have you applied for that as well? Yeah, we, go ahead, Carol. Yeah, I um I got my application in as quick as I could as soon as they opened the portal last Friday and um, word has it that it's on the way, but I haven't seen it yet. So and same with you, Laura. So yeah, we did that and we also applied for a disaster um, relief loan. Um, that's another option. Um, we also applied for an independent line of credit. That one didn't come through. Um, we are um, the PPP has. Um, it was a thousand page piece of legislation and as our accountant has said the rules keep changing on it every day for how and where it gets implemented um, and i'm not entirely sure where it is right now but you can spend up to 25 percent of it to cover rent and 75 percent for payroll and though that can be forgiven but it, there's a lot of rules on whether you can wait to sign it until you're ready to open up again or it, there's a lot still to learn about it while it's you're dealing with yeah while you're dealing with your business staying afloat you're having to figure out all this complicated uh -huh. paperwork <laughs> yeah. as as well Crazy. and how how do you suppose uh each one of you what kind of hit do you think your businesses are going to take carol do you have a sense yet of how uh down sales are i feel like they're a third of what norm they would normally be um maybe a half um but it's a, 
it's a, at least a half down and probably more because we sell a lot of things here besides books and nobody can buy that stuff when mm -hmm. we can't come in the door. And so we are getting a lot of orders and more orders than we normally would get over the internet mm -hmm. and over the phone. Mm -hmm. And we're really grateful for that. And it is keeping us afloat. And I did bring back a couple of employees to help answer the phone and process orders because I can't do it by myself, especially when uh, we have to do a post office run every afternoon and we're doing bicycle delivery um, now that the weather's nice. That's, that's how, fun. That's how I'm staying. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fun yeah, thing to do. So, so people love that. They love it when they, when they see us bike up with, with their books. And, mm -hmm. and, and before I go to, to the other booksellers, are you seeing any trends in what people are ordering? Like for instance, now that schools are out, are you seeing more children's books being ordered? Oh, yeah, and we have a staff member who is uh, a kid lit expert, and she is busy all the time making recommendations because parents are desperate <laughs> for for their kids to have more reading material because the kids are just tearing through their favorite series and ne needing more. They need more books, and so we're selling a lot of children's books, a lot of series um, for those avid reading kids. And um, but for adults, it's um, I'd say that people are, some people are really getting into the uh, meaty sagas that they haven't maybe tackled before, mm -hmm. uh, get lots mm -hmm. of big books um, or some mm -hmm. really good nonfiction, a lot of, lot of new nonfiction and memoirs, and, but um, I would say not a whole lot of, of disaster. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably good. You don't want to compound it with something else. A few copies of The Plague, Love in the Time of Cholera, and um, that kind of thing. But mostly I think people are sticking with their usual stuff. Laura, what about, um, what about you? Are you seeing any, uh, well, let's talk about the, the downturn first. Do you have any mm -hmm. sense of how, how where much, it's going down, to be, how much um, down you are? Um, it's a lot. Um, it is definitely a lot. I would agree that our numbers are, we're seeing some numbers similar to what Carol has, mm -hmm. down at least a half. Um, and, uh, but we're trying to be creative on how to do things. Um, we're seeing actually one of the trends I see is people going back and reading something they read a long time ago that mm -hmm. was really, they really enjoyed or was comforting. Um, Ironically enough, uh, the, in the strange world, um, we can't lay our hands on a copy of Twilight anymore. Um, they're out at all the distributors. That that one has seen a resurgence, which <laughs> surprised me, but it's kind of interesting. Um, other pieces is, I agree, people are actually going into things that are meaty or, or heavier, more challenging to read. Um, but we actually also have a cadre of things, people who um, really like our uh, like death and influenza and epidemic um, <laughs> Uh, list that we put together it's actually doing fine um, but our last thing is is we're doing an Easter bundle and saw that. that's what's yeah. got us busy these uh, last few days we guaranteed delivery if you ordered by noon tomorrow on noon on Friday we would get it to you by Easter and that's a book um, of a, a bundle it's of a, books it's books and gifts and a pen and a little pocket journal mm -hmm. um, it's an Easter bundle so it's got gift items in it but it's limited to on-hand stock. Mm -hmm. It's not that you can't order. It has to be whatever we have in mm -hmm. store. And do you, you get to pick or you, did you make the bundle up for them as a surprise? I, I made the bundle up for them and I tell them what the categories are. And, um, and if it's, if it's, we had set it up for four to eight year olds. If they have a teenager, we will make it, we will not give them the Peppa Pig book. <laughs> That's not the thing for the teenager. So it's mostly for kids then? Mostly mm -hmm. for kids, okay. Yeah. And um, what about you, Melissa? Are you seeing any? Well, first of all, how down are your? How much down are your sales? I think we we're down seventy percent for sure. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we're getting some online orders, and like I said, a few phone and people that I'm answering via email and doing book recommendations as I can. Um, not quite as formally as as these probably smarter <laughs> women are doing, but. Um, we're seeing a lot of meaty series like Outlander has been super popular, like people have watched the show and now they want to read the books and those are thick. And so definitely every more thick books, um, in general, we were seeing even before we, uh, 
close the doors. Um, Why do you suppose that is? I mean, I know I, I'm kind of gravitating towards that as well. I mean, wanting to read history. Um, I think people have the time and they're, they have a chunk of time they can invest and, and dig in rather, you know, meteor books like that are harder to pick up and put down at night when you're trying to go to sleep. And if you've got two or three hours you want to kill, it's fun to dive into something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The opposite problem of what we're having, which is that none of my books <laughs> are able to, <laughs> to read very much because we're all busy with um, mm -hmm. getting books out. Yeah, so you actually, you yourselves probably aren't reading that much. Not as much. Well, I'm, I'm listening to audio books when I can, and um, mm -hmm. I get a little bit of reading in at night, but not, not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, are either the two of you, Carol or Melissa, doing... Uh, Virtual events, I know, Laura, you are, and we'll talk about that. Um, have you experimented at all with, with that? That is not something that I have tried to tackle yet. I have shared some virtual events that I know that other stores have been doing. I've tried to push that out on social media. Um, I myself am focusing all my efforts that I have any extra time for on the website to make it easier for people to shop on our website. Um, we have a really good functioning ordering system on the website, but it hadn't been easy for people to browse for books. And so we're making a whole lot of pages so that people can browse with rec recommendations from each of the staff, um, lists of books for middle, middle grade readers, um, gardening books. You know, we're creating all these different browsing pages and that's where we put our effort in right now. Mm -hmm. I love author events. I love them so much, but I really can't feel very excited about trying to do a virtual event right now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not, not spending any mm -hmm. brain, brain effort on that yet. Um, Laura, talk about that because you had some events in the pipeline already. And then uh, you have continued with that, um, doing some Facebook lives as well. How's that been going for you? Are you getting viewership on that? So, um, we switched our TJ Klune event at the March 20, March 30th, end of March, I'm losing track of which days are which, to a virtual event, and it went very well. We had 147 people tune into the event, and the video has over a thousand views. Um, we were able to send the books to him ahead of time to get them autographed, mm. um, and so we were able to send autographed copies out. Um, that part went really, really well. Um, I think it is the, the big advantage that I have is that we were a larger store. So even at a smaller side, I had someone who's can focus just on putting together that programming. And that's an advantage that smaller stores don't have. And I, yeah, I hope they use that and put your own link to sell the books that were from our events from your page. And please, because it doesn't have to be just, it's not just about me. It's about all of the stores surviving. Um, we do have another live event tonight with um, Mary Pauline Lowry um, with the Roxy Letters. Um, she's a Le Boise local. Um, I think one of the challenges of this time is when a debut author uh, is was counting on having all this mm -hmm. time to connect with people face to face. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot harder mm -hmm. to do it virtually. Well, um, and you, so you had... Uh you had bought all the books for the tree fort the story fort authors that were coming in so yeah you, you have all that stock as well i know you were you're letting yeah, people we, purchase them at 25 percent off but hopefully they'll get sold again in september when the event, uh -huh. event yeah happens, well, but yeah i don't know what how that one's going to come <laughs> around that story fort's a whole another thing um but, but let's let's go back to what you said about um booksellers banding together um are you getting a lot, is the community itself nationwide sharing ideas with each other about how to survive in this era? I mean, are people doing uh, pa Patreon or, you know, like fundraising events, for instance, or are, is there a lot of support among yeah. each other? Yeah, there's a lot going on. It's, it's really heartening. Um, the independent booksellers um, all over the country have different ways of meeting up and there's Facebook groups where people post uh, ideas and the problems and challenges and oh my god does anybody else have quarantine envy right now and you know things like that and that's always a good thing when you need some encouragement or some ideas and then 
the American Booksellers Association has Zoom meetings, um, mm -hmm. coffee hours, really regularly so that you can check in with each other and um, Is quarantine envy that you you wish you could be at home instead of working? Is that what quarantine <laughs> envy is? Yeah, quarantine envy uh -huh. happens when you are working in your store and you don't get to be at home all day long and work on the garden or whatever it is that everybody else is getting to do. <laughs> the life of a small business person, it's very difficult even in good times. I would rather here working than, than stuck at home. So I don't want to, mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to think that I'm not great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think that because Amazon deliveries are so delayed that maybe it's for, you know, books and everything that maybe it's helping? Um, I think it's helping. It, we've, I think our online sales have benefited from that. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really great opportunity for people to think about what life would be like if it was only Amazon mm -hmm. and not us. How, what would you be doing for your books right now? if we weren't here. And I think people are getting a glimpse of like an online only world, not being able to go to the bookstore, not being able to gather with their friends mm -hmm. or just run into a friend mm -hmm. bookstore like you do so often and what that's like. And people are gonna, people miss us. And I think as, as hard as this all is, that's the silver lining is you kind of get a glimpse of what life would be like if we weren't around and maybe we won't get taken for granted. <laughs> we'll see. Any other silver linings that, that all of you see, you know, maybe in terms of ways you're innovating that might stick around or your, your thoughts as we close here on, on, on silver linings? So one of my silver linings is that I have treasured the number and variety of comments and encouragement that we've gotten from our customers and fellow booksellers. Um, when you talk about collaborations, I'm learning from what people have done in other states that are farther ahead in this epidemic mm -hmm. than we are. And that collaboration between booksellers is a lot of why I'm able to do the things we're doing. It's because we do lean on each other and learn from each other and I see that same sense of generosity in our communities that are reaching out to us and continuing to be a part of our community and figuring out ways to still connect with us. Yeah, we had a Zoom um, book club meeting last week. And instead of doing the book because not everybody could participate, we all just shared what we were reading and it was so fun to connect. And so I think just finding other ways to connect. I know I had a customer left me a voicemail yesterday and she said okay it's getting warmer we can all just go park our cars six feet apart and we can talk about books i mean everybody wants to get together there's that mm -hmm. that community sharing and and so we're doing it virtually right now but it's cute that as the weather gets better i think maybe we'll go meet at the park and <laughs> hold up our books and you know it's just it's interesting and, and tons of great comments and on the orders you know we can't wait to come back in the store and it that's what keeps you going it really does yeah. Yeah. People are buying gift cards that they're not going to pick up until we open again. Right. And that's super supportive. It's just like a little love letter. <laughs> oh, so you would encourage, encourage people to, to do things like that, to keep, keep yeah. things going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yesterday we had somebody that bought gift cards that they're going to, they just want us to use those gift cards to make sure that people that don't have money to buy books can still get books. So just gestures like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm restores your faith in humanity. <laughs> well, I, yeah, go on, Laura. I've, I really have appreciated talking with all of you. I know that this is one uh, positive outgrowth of this is this ability to use this technology to talk and to bring people together from different communities so that people watching this uh, will know you're still there, you're still in business um, to reach out and um, participate in whatever way they can by purchasing books or um, attending virtual events, um, buying gift cards, anything else to keep small businesses going during this time. And I wish all of you uh, the best during this time, both for yourselves, your staff, your family, um, just to say, stay safe, <laughs> stay healthy, and keep on reading. I know I will be. So I appreciate that uh, you're input very much during this time. Thanks so much. Yeah. Bye. Take, take Bye. care. Thank you.